20 DNA. If it's in you, it should be on you. Holden Rhodes Coffee. Always fresh, never tired. Coffee with personality. Check out www.holdenroadscoffee.com. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Me and the Boys Wrestling. My name is James Owen Brown. I am flying solo today because the block is no doubt polishing. His Me in the Bank, Money in the Boys. Cash, satchel, bag, purse, barrel, uh, container, whichever one you want to use. Cash in the satchel. I don't know. I, I was always partial to cash in the satchel. But we are here. I am here. And we have an exciting special episode for you today. We're doing a tag team tournament. The winner of said tournament is going to be the new number one contender for the tag belts and I think I'm just going to fire it up now because uh, why not right we can talk on the fly firing it up, actually checking the volume firing it up now future James will screen this bad boy house show viewer right away Shout out to the house show viewer. Me and the boys wrestling presents. What are we presenting? A number one contenders tag team tournament. We're going to see who's going to take on the jungle boys. So we kind of ignored the tag teams for the last uh, week or two. And I thought we'd do a little something special just for the tag teams. Right off the bat, Crooked Control. Going to take on DMP and Ronald McDonald. Now, DMP kind of left without a tag team after uh, Mario and Luigi split up. Uh, well, actually, after DMP split them up, he's like, I want them to fight. <laughs> like, yeah, who doesn't want to see Mario go at Luigi? That's just good booking. That's best for business. There's that ripcord face buster. Uh, by, I believe, Primetime Perry. Somebody's out of here. DMP is out of here. And Ronald McDonald has taken out one member of Crooked Control, so we're at down to one apiece. That's neat. That's a neat wrinkle. DMP, of course, trading away Crooked Control. And uh, some small measure of revenge there for uh, ADJ to get a pin on DMP, the man who traded them away. And not to say that, you know, they were thrown away or anything like that, because DMP uh, going the other way went Sarah Bailey, a fierce, fierce competitor on the ladies' side of things. Oh, DMP... Er, ADJ went for that discus punch, but Ronald countered into a snap suplex. Ronald McDonald, the current pop culture punch out champion. And over on pop culture punch out, of course, we are in the process of determining a new number one contender. If you caught the last episode of pop culture punch out, uh, thanks for watching. Sorry we got cut off. We got 18 men through a 20 man rumble. And uh, then we got cut off. There's ADJ up on the top rope. Goes for a big elbow, but misses. Super kick right in the gut. And there's that ripcord face breaker. And we'll see if that's enough. Wow. Ronald McDonald showing why he is the current pop culture punch out champ. ADJ sweeps the leg and hits that breakdance leg drop. And that's going to be enough. Crooked Control, ADJ, and Primetime Perry are going to move on in this tournament. Now the damage will carry over. So you want to get in there. You want to finish your opponent off as quickly as possible and move on to the next round. I was thinking a bit about tag teams and how there's uh, 
A, sp a tag team when I was a kid used to be like a special attraction. And it's not really that way anymore. The amount of times two guys have just kind of been thrown together and they try to make it work. There's not enough six-man tag matches anymore. What happened to that, playa? There you see my controller dying. And uh, they call that three and a half stars. Up next, Showtime and Brickhouse. Going to take on the new DX, the team of Heartbreak Jizzle and T-Money Gang. Showtime and Brickhouse representing the Dangerous Goods. New DX representing the New Age Militia. Crooked Control moving on representing the Dangerous Goods and DMP. And Ronald McDonald representing the Hellfire Club. Thanks for watching, friends. Please be sure to like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, do all those social media things. It's much appreciated. Oh my god. Heartbreak Jizzle is out of this match already. I'm busy plugging the socials and people are getting ejected. T-Money Gang is in trouble right now. He's going to elbow Showtime right in the face, make his way out of that. But Brickhouse going to hit him with the, uh, hmm, I'm stalling, I don't remember the name. The X Factor, but not the Brick Factor. And that's going to do it. T-Money Gang, just like that. This is a tournament setting and uh, I don't know. New DX look kind of like they got stunned out there. You see T-Money Gang hitting a pedigree on Brickhouse. But at the same time, T-Money Gang got pinned by Showtime. There it is. Well, maybe the Brick Breaker? I feel like the Brick Breaker. That was it. Either way. Showtime and Brickhouse going to move on. Showtime and Brickhouse going to take on Crooked Control. That's the two tag teams from Dangerous Goods. I guess we're going to see who the superior team is. Okay. Up next, Holden Rhodes and Mr. Miyagi taking on the team of Itami and Nicholas Cage. Newcomer. Itami said in the chat, hey, I want Nicholas Cage. Me and Nicholas Cage, we can go all the way. So uh, I checked. And somebody had made Nicolas Cage. So there he is. I hope he's to your liking, Itami. Nicolas Cage kind of doesn't know what to do and stunned awe just being in the presence of one Holden Rhodes. And then he does the Nicolas Cage Del Sol. And that's going to do it for Holden Rhodes. Short night for the man. Check out HoldenRhodesCoffee.com. He might not wrestle so great, but man makes a hell of a coffee. Nicholas Cage going for a pin on Mr. Miyagi. It's not going to be enough. Hitami and Nicholas Cage versus Mr. Miyagi right here. A two on one situation. We'll see if Miyagi can overcome the odds, but uh, most of the time, it's just a matter of time in these two-to-one situations. Nick Cage going to fall out of the ring stunned, and that's going to give Miyagi a window to maybe do some damage here on the Tommy and try and go for a pin. Oh my god, Mr. Miyagi evens it up. The Tommy's out of here. Couldn't handle the wrath. Of the 80 plus year old Mr. Miyagi. Now he's going to go to work on Nick Cage. And we're going to see what he's made out of. I can't really tell what Nick Cage that is. Because he's kind of generic. Is it is it leaving Las Vegas Nicolas Cage? City of Angels Nicolas Cage? Face off? Well it's not face off Nicolas Cage. Um, what else? I don't know, I'm blanking on Nick Cage movies now. Ghost Rider. Look at Miyagi. Miyagi doesn't care how many movies you've been in. Miyagi was in at least two. Oh my 
God, now Nick Cage has the bat, swings wild. Miyagi just a bit too quick, hops in the ring, then back out of the ring, takes the bat from Nick Cage, and goes to work again. Look at the announce teams up. Mr. Miyagi with a violent streak, apparently. And we haven't really seen that yet from him. We've seen a lot of those educated feet. But not a whole lot of dirty pool. So maybe that's something he's picked up over there at Team Holden. You can do all the karate you want, but there's nothing like a bat to the face. While you're internet surfing and looking at Holden Road's coffee, you should also check out www.420dna.com because if it's in you, it should be on you just like it's on me. Nick Cage going for a pin, but he only gets a two. Slides under the ring. See, I don't. if I'm Nick Cage, I don't think I'm going to introduce more weapons into this match yet. There he is with a kendo stick. Miyagi in and out of the ring like a weirdo and then gets hit in the stomach and across the back and across the back and right in the forehead Nick Cage oh wow Miyagi had about enough of that uh, snaps the spine of Nicolas Cage and goes for a pin <clears throat> and that is a first that is a first here at me and the boys wrestling. No team in an elimination scenario has ever gone down two to one and come back to win. Not on on this game, not on 2K20. Sip, sip. I'm having a, uh, a cup of Papa Don't Peach tea. Holden Rhodes out there in stunned silence at the pure skill and strength and athleticism of Mr. Miyagi. He doesn't know what to do or say or what camera to look at. They're going to call that four stars. And they don't disagree. That was crazy. Holden Rhodes and Mr. Miyagi moving on. Now we're going to see Michelangelo and Raphael, another dangerous goods tag team, take on the team of Ross Bruce and Mr. Mustache representing 420. Team 420 DNA. Oh my God. Mr. Mustache right away hits a cutter. And then we see Raphael going to work on Ross Bruce again with that cutter. We'll see if that's enough to put Michelangelo away. We're down to two on one already, which has been a common theme so far here in this tournament. There's a double team maneuver, that's nice. The old Scottish leg sweep. The dragon screw though from uh, something, yeah. Come on. The dog's trying to settle himself in the chair beside me and he almost spilt my teeth. Referee gets a two count. Let's see if, oh no. There's the big spine buster. Mr. Mustache there to clean up the mess. That's gonna do it. They're gonna make quick. Look, Ross, Ross Bruce is halfway to the back already. Let's get this over with. And it seems like the Ninja Turtles were zero competition whatsoever for Ross Bruce and Mr. Mustache. Who have, uh, I don't know. They've been a pretty good team so far. This is only the second time really we've seen them together, but they function. They function as a cohesive unit. Look at that spine buster, that's nasty. Yeah, I don't know. You gotta feel good about that. Going into round two with pretty much a full power bar. I didn't see any offense mounted by the Ninja Turtles, which is incredibly disappointing. They had three, uh, three irons in this fire. Now two of them have to fight each other and the other one's eliminated. We're on to round two, friends. Crooked Control versus Showtime and Brickhouse. This is for a number one contenders match. Well, the whole tournament is a number one contenders match. You know what I mean. It's for a number one contendership. 
Brickhouse going for a pin right away on primetime parry, and ADJ goes for a pin on showtime. My two teams. Oh, the brick breaker. Uh oh. And on the other side of things, we got a kick to the gut and the ripcord face breaker. The brick breaker not going to be enough. The referee's uh, tied up and way out of position. Now he's making mistakes. Of course, it's not a three count. The man was down for about 15 seconds. Brickhouse hits a standing moonsault. And just powers up primetime Perry, who really is, is not having a good day today. First out in the last match. Oh no. The showstopper on ADJ. And that's going to do it. Oh, Perry was out on the other side. We still haven't counted ADJ. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Wow. We got that zoom in on the action that was happening, but uh, by zooming in like that, we missed the pin. Really? Come on, man. You get a replay at some of the action. It happened so fast. And again, you're moving on to the finals here with uh, pretty much an untouched power bar. Showtime and Brickhouse make quick work of former tag champs, Crooked Control. Showtime and Brickhouse, former champs in their own right. It's a three-star match. Everything just feels right at me and the boys wrestling when uh, the Jungle Boys are tag champs. Something feels off when it's not them. I don't know why that is. Maybe that's biased booking on my part. Holden Rhodes and Mr. Miyagi going to take on Ross Bruce and Mr. Mustache. Right away, Mr. Mustache with that cutter into a pin. He's going to get Holden Rhodes just like that. Oh, my goodness. Meanwhile, Miyagi going for a pin on Ross Bruce, but it's not to be. Now, you want to rule Miyagi out, but literally in the last match, we saw him come back from these exact odds. Oh, Nasty. <laughs> Ross Bruce upset there. Kind of got his toe stuck on. Picks Miyagi up, hits him with that spine buster, and again, Mr. Mustache picks the bones. Miyagi, though, not going out like that. Wow, Ross Bruce smashes the knee, hits a kick, and then lets the crowd know. Uh oh. Mr. Mustache went for the cleft collider, but Miyagi reversed it. Could we see another comeback from two to one? See if maybe Mr. Mustache and Ross Bruce can uh, work together a little better than. Why does he come the cleft collider on Miyagi? And he still kicks out. You got to think of your career, sir. This is an 80 year old man. Just getting knocked around the ring by two young bucks and he's still fighting back here. Ross Bruce punching everybody in sight. Looks like there's a little tension here between Ross Bruce and Mr. Mustache. <coughs> Let's pick him up. Pick him up so I can punch him. Again, Mr. Mustache kind of popped Ross Bruce and then fires him out of the ring. And I don't know why you would do that. Well, I guess if you wanted to hit that running backflip thing. Oh, no. Chops the old fella. It looked like he hit the corner of that table. Oh, my God. Hung up on the barricade. He dodges one punch, but gets hit with another and then a vicious German suplex. The crowd in stunned silence. Miyagi still trying to fight back. Out of control. Ross Bruce just shakes his head. I'll let my partner deal with that. Meanwhile, Miyagi's waging a little bit of a comeback here. Ross Bruce steps back out, smashes Miyagi into that barricade. Kicks him in the gut. Oh wow, Miyagi goes over the top, goes for a pin on the outside, which doesn't make any sense. 
Mr. Mustache going to intervene now. Now, having come back from two to one, again, Miyagi reverses into a nonsensical pin on the outside. Mr. Miyagi is an absolute beast, but now he's bloodied. Mr. Mustache introduces a weapon to the match. And, uh, Ross Bruce does that thing that the Hardy Boys used to do. Mr. Mustache, oh no. I'm gonna feed the man little rabbit kicks. And let the crowd know. Really working the legs now, Miyagi. And maybe that's what, uh, had that happened in the first match. He wouldn't be so uh, dangerous with those kicks. Ross Bruce says that's it. Tries to fire the man back in, but Miyagi just went limp. Miyagi still, still, after all this, fighting back, manages to put Mr. Mustache into the steps. Ross Bruce with a neck breaker and then demands to know where is my money from Mr. Miyagi in a poor timed effort on my part. Oh, the sling blade. Oh, no, nothing fancy about two heels right in the face. Miyagi bloodied. Almost into the steps again, into the barricade, into the steps. Into the barricade. My God. The way he took the corner of that table earlier, that was... Uh, he should probably be in concussion protocol after this. Where is... No, I failed again. <laughs> if you have the kick, even, I only get the mine. Now Mr. Mustache got a kendo stick. Oh, man. Looks like he clipped Ross Bruce with that kendo stick. Now Miyagi still fights back. Absolutely unbelievable effort from Mr. Miyagi. Steals the kento stick. Goes to work on Ross Bruce. Snaps the kendo stick on Ross Bruce, who's down in the corner here at ringside. The announced team is visibly uncomfortable. As Miyagi manages to mount some offense here. See if he's going to use that barricade to his advantage. Throw one man away. Here you go. You got a window here. Ross Bruce gonna capitalize right away. With the uh, the caber toss. Oh, he's just showing off now. Showing off that strength. The caber toss on an 80 year old man. Now he's gonna go for a pin. Let's see if that's enough. It is enough. You gotta wonder, the man's 80 plus years old. What's it gonna take to put him down? How strong is his karate? On my YouTube right now, you can check out a, a, a video I did for a contest. And I believe what happened was that I missed the deadline by about half hour because I saw it too late in the day to do anything about it. But it's a, uh, it was a contest to win a Super Bowl party. And I uh, made my little video, and uh, it was supposed to be one minute. But uh, before I finished editing, I left a version that's more... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. That's our final Brickhouse and Showtime going to take on Ross Bruce and Mr. Mustache. I'm prattling on about a different video while there's action happening here. Go check it out, though. Fan Duel Contest. It's uh, why I should win a Super Bowl party. But I believe I was disqualified for not getting in one time. Finishers right off the bat from both members of Showtime and Brickhouse. And again. Nothing fancy. That's the strategy. Get in there, hit your finisher, and get out of there. Mr. Mustache is out of this match. The same thing happened last time. It's down to this. Ross Bruce, the last thing in between. Showtime and Brickhouse reuniting and reigniting their feud with the Jungle Boys. Showtime just hitting everybody. Brickhouse hitting everybody. Uh -oh. Ross Bruce just got hit with the Brick Breaker. And from the looks of these power bars, 
the new number one contenders for the Quarantine League Wrestling Championships currently held by the Jungle Boys. Showtime in Brickhouse. That's going to be exciting. We'll do that in the near future. Speaking of tournaments, coming in March, the Marcho Mania, the Memorial Scott Hall Tournament. Oh, that's nice. Now they're being awarded belts. They did not win the belts. I need to be clear. I kept saying number one contender. I, I tried to make sure I said it three times <laughs> because I, I don't know why they were awarded the belts. The, they shouldn't have been on the line. It's probably something that I didn't click in the tournament settings, but that's fine. That's okay. But March Mania is coming soon. So if there's uh, if you're on the roster currently and there's somebody that you would like to fight from the WWE roster, you let me know. Showtime in Brickhouse. Reign supreme tonight. And yes, if there's somebody that you would like to fight, because that's basically... I'm going to shut this and come back to me. Where are the buttons? There we go. So that we can talk more. It's a short episode, so I can talk to you a little bit about some uh, some things we got coming. March, big tournament. So what we do, we take each member of our roster and put them against somebody from the WWE roster in a gigantic 64-person tournament. Now, last year was way too much editing. I did it all wrong. So this year it's going to be a bit different. And what we're going to do is get through the better part of the tournament and do the tournament finals live at Camp Cataract, March 25th. <coughs> uh, so if you're local and you can make it, please come. If you are not local, you'll be able to watch that possibly without commentary. We're not sure. We're working on the logistics of it, but we're going to do the best we can to get you the best feed that we can for the finals of that tournament. And that's going to be fun. Next week, I believe, we're going to see some fallout from the Chris Chaos, Aaron DeWolf situation. We're going to see a whole bunch of finisher skirmishes, like a little round robin of those. And, uh, yeah, some other stuff in store. So, in the meantime, friends, check out sharetheshock.ca to keep up with everything that DeBlock is up to when he's not polishing his MATB cash in the satchel. Check out www.420dna.com because if it's in you, it should be on you just like it's on me. Check out holdenroadscoffee.com. Always fresh, never tired coffee with personality and like share subscribe all the social media things as well and i will see you next time my friends cheers <laughs>